want to now go to our guest, Richard DeKazer, the chief economist at Woodley Park Research in Washington. Richard, welcome to you. So your forecast was for 23,000 private sector jobs added. That was among the lowest among economists surveyed, and it was still a lot higher than what the number, as Mike just reported to us, actually came in at 13,000. So how bad is it out there? Well, I think we are in a soft patch right now. You know, the May numbers were pretty bad. And uh, as was mentioned, uh, initial claims have been in the doldrums for the past couple of months, actually drifting up somewhat in the month of June. So I think there is a real slowdown going on in private sector employment. Uh, I think it'll be evident when we see the numbers uh, this Friday for the month of June. And I think we can trace that all back to a couple of things. Number one, we've had this expiration of tax credits which were pervasive through the economy, housing, home appliances, ener energy efficient home appliances. When that ended, we saw consumer spending trail off a bit and, and housing as well. Uh, and also we've had over the past eight to 10 weeks, the emergence of the financial crisis in Europe, uh, which has done two things. It's created greater uncertainty and I think that's inhibited some job hiring. And it's also had some real effects in terms of changing the outlook for Europe and I think the prospects for US export sales there. So I think we are in a, uh, uh, a genuine soft patch right now. I don't think it's going to persist. I think both of these things, the air pocket, if you will, after the tax credits, uh, isn't going to last forever. That's a temporary thing. And I'm betting uh, that the risks related to defaults in Europe are going to diminish rather than increase. But nonetheless, I think it causes us to uh, temper expectations for the near term. Richard, the ADP report, uh, the big losses in the ADP report came in the small business category. Right. Uh, the, they measure it differently than the Bureau of Labor Statistics, which uses the birth death model plug. So do you think there's a potential for a big difference between what we saw in ADP and non-farm payrolls on Friday? No, I don't. Well, I, I actually expect that we'll see non-farm payrolls stronger, even if you exclude government and census. I think we're going to see a number around 50,000, which is nothing great to, to talk about. But um, I do think it'll be a little bit better than the ADP report. Um, the small business weakness has been pervasive for the past year, at least. Uh, and I would argue that that's most due to uh, credit conditions being especially restrictive. If you have access to capital markets, as medium and large businesses do, you can get credit pretty easily. But if you're going to a bank, as small business must, you're really stung by the credit crunch. And uh, I think that that persistent weakness at that level of the economy is something that's not going to change very much anytime soon. Richard, what do you think it's going to take to get uh, payrolls gaining some traction to really start adding jobs in, in a meaningful way? Well, I think we're still getting good growth. Uh, even in spite of this soft patch, I think the second quarter as a whole is going to be somewhere between 35 and 4% in GDP, though the latter part of the quarter will show uh, more weakness than that. Uh, and if we can sustain that pace, eventually businesses are going to be forced to hire workers. They're going to be uh, reaching the limits of what can be achieved through labor productivity, which has been astronomical over the course of the past year, and they'll be forced to pull the trigger and hire workers. In fact, I think if you look back, for example, at the May report, we saw some evidence of that. The May report, again, was very weak for private sector payroll gains, but you saw the latent demand for labor there nonetheless. We saw overtime hours increasing. We saw temporary worker hiring increasing. Increase. This tells me that there's demand for labor. It's just that businesses are very skittish about um, translate, translating that into permanent cost. All right, Richard DeKazer, the chief economist with Woodley Park Research, again, the most accurate predictor of today's ADP numbers. Thank you for your time and insights. And I do